Okay, so we're continuing our discussion on permutations and combinations. Okay. So question is given the numbers one, two, four, five, six, seven. First part is, how many four-digit numbers can be made? How many four-digit numbers can be made? Using the above digits without replacement without replacement means that if two has been used once it cannot be used again and so on okay so how many four digit numbers can be made from the above how many digits are these six digits so that there's no repetition okay so we need to form a four digit number from the from these six numbers, one, two, three, four. Okay, now you need to think whether the placement of the number matters or not. Like if two is coming over here or if two is at the end, does that make a difference in the number? So obviously if it does, if 2 is at the first place, it's going to mean something else. And if it 2 is at the end, it's going to mean something else. So here the order matters. So this is a question on permutation. When the order does not matter, it's a question on combinations. We haven't talked about combinations yet. But in questions, you will need to identify whether to use P or C from the calculator. So when order of the numbers matter, it's permutation, it's arrangements. And when the order does not matter, matter then it's combinations, which is also called selection. We'll, we'll talk more about that in a while. Okay, so this is a question on permutations. So how many permutations are possible or how many arrangements are possible if we're making four digit numbers out of the given six digits? such that there's no repetition. So we're going to use the basic counting principle again. So for the first spot, we have six contenders. So six times five times four times. For the last spot, there would be three contenders. So the answer would be five times, six times five times four times three. Whatever is the answer for that is the number of four digit number, uh, digit numbers possible okay or instead of doing this you can do 6 p 4 six numbers are available and four spots are available so 6 p 4 is going to give you the same answer as 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 what is that 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 or 6 p 4 is 360 so three, you can form 360 four digit numbers from these given uh, six numbers. Okay. So that's part A. Answer is six P four. And you can't leave it at six P four. You must give the answer give the value of it okay part b how many of the four digit numbers are even how many okay how many four digit numbers are even First part may four spots in four digit number banana or six digits available. Hai. Repetition nahi hogi. 
सो फर्स्ट फेस में ये सिक्स वैल्यूज आ सकती है वन भी आ सकता है टू बी थ्री फोर बी फाइव बी सिक्स बी सेवन बी सो सिक्स पॉसिबिलिटीज इसमें हैं फिर फाइव पॉसिबिलिटीज नेक्स्ट डिजिट की हैं फिर फोर फिर थ्री सो आईदर राइट सिक्स टाइम फाइव टाइम फोर टाइम थ्री और जस्ट राइट सिक्स बी फोर दे गिव द सेम आंसर सिक्स डिजिट ओके दैट वॉज द फर्स्ट पार्ट पार्ट बी हाउ मेनी फोर डिजिट नंबर आर इवन अब इवन हो गया तो फर्स्ट फेस में रिस्ट्रिक्शन आ गई दिस कैन आईदर बी अच्छा हाउ मेनी फोर डिजिट नंबर आर इवन सो लास्ट डिजिट में रिस्ट्रिक्शन आ गया दिस कैन आईदर बी टू और फोर और सिक्स सो देर आर थ्री कंटेंडर्स फॉर दिस स्पॉट सो यू राइट थ्री है okay now if you take away one of the numbers in the end how many do we have here 1 2 3 4 5 take away one five are left so then there are five contenders for the first three spots so you can either write 5 p3 or you can do 5 times 4 times 3 so the answer is going to be 5 p3 times 3 so that's 180 oh. so there are 184 digit numbers that are even and same should be the answer for odd there would be 180 uh four digit numbers that would be odd because how many odd numbers do we have here 1 2 and 3 so yes again three contenders for the last odd spot and take away one from the data you have five spot five values left and three spots left so 5 p3 so even if the question was for odd numbers your answer would have been same okay next is how many of the four digit numbers are greater than 2000 so greater than 2000 okay so now we have some restriction in the first spot if it's greater than 2000 that means this can be 2 this can be 4 this can be 5 this can be 6 and this can be 7 so we have five contenders for the first spot so you can write 5 or you can even write 5p1 it's still 5 so 5 here or 5p1 times okay One is gone from the original uh, list, so we have one, two, three, four, five left, and three spots left. So that's going to be five times, uh, same five p three. Five times five p three. or you can do now there are five contenders for this one four contenders for this one and three contenders for this one it's going to give you the same answer as 5p3 so 5 times 5p3 that's 300 so there would be 300 four digit numbers that would be greater than 2000 Okay. Next is more than two thousand and even. Greater than two thousand and even. okay 
Now let's take a look at the numbers possible at the first spot and the numbers possible at the last spot. So the first spot for the first position, it has to be greater than 2000. So that can be two, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And for the last spot, it's even, so it could be two, four, and six. Now there's a problem in this question. We have same contender for the first spot and we have same contenders two and four for the last spot and even six. So we have same contenders. Now that's going to be a problem. When that's the case, you further simplify the question. So you have two cases now. We can say that the last spot is even and the first value is also even. Either that's the case or the first value is odd and the last value has to be even because the, value, uh, the number has to be even. So break it into two parts. So now we have Two here, four here, six here, and we have three contenders here, let's say. And then we'll have two contenders here because one has already taken the first spot. S similarly, for odd, how many contenders do we have? We have five and seven. So it's going to be two or two P1. And even would be three contenders, two, four, and six. So three contenders at the last spot or three P1. So break it down into even first, even last, or odd first and even last. That simplifies the question. And now we know that there are three contenders for the first spot and then two contenders for the last spot. You can even write three here and two here. It's the same thing. And how many contenders do we have in the middle? So there are two spots left. So I'm going to write P2 and take away two numbers from the available six numbers. So now there are four values left in the middle. So four P2, I mean, four contenders left for the middle two spots. Should So it should be four P2, okay. And then there's going to be plus in between. When you're breaking it down into different scenarios, you add the result. Okay. So for the next one, it's going to be, uh, let's do the rest here. It's going to be two contenders for the first spot, uh, three contenders for the last spot. And in between, there are four digits left and two spots left again, so four, P2. Let me check. Yeah, the answer is 144. So when you enter this in the calculator and add this with it, you get 144. Okay. Now let's do greater than 2000 and odd. So this is three times 4P2 times two plus two times 4P2 times three. Okay, next part is greater than 2000 and odd. Okay, so again, we're going to split it into two parts since we'll have overlapping entries at the first and the last spot. So last has to be odd. 
So the first can be odd or it can be even. And how many total contenders do we have for the first spot? Keeping both even and odd in mind, it's going to be two, four, five, six, seven. So for odd, we have five and seven. So two contenders for the first odd spot. And then the last one has to be odd as well. So it's going to be one contender for the last spot. Okay, and in between, we have now four digit lefts because from six take away the two odd numbers. So that's four and then two places left. So that's going to be four P2. So in between you write four P2 or you write four times three using basic counting principle. So this is going to be two times four P2 times one plus first number needs to be even and greater than 2000 as well. So that would be, oh, it is my survey, sorry. So there's also one in the group. But you can't place one here because it will make this smaller than 2000. But the question said that it says that it has to be greater than 2000. So the first place has con two odd contenders, this and this. So one gets chosen here, but the last space now also has two odd contenders. One of them would be one. And one of them would be the odd number not chosen at the first spot. So it's going to be this or one of the other two. So it's going to be two again. So it should be two here and two here. Excuse me a second. And then for the, how many even contenders do we have for the first spot? Two, four, and six, so that's three. And then odd contenders for the last spot would be five, seven, and one. So that's three contenders over here. Because it could be five, it could be seven, it could be one. And in between we have four digit left and four, two spots left, so four P2. So three times four P two times three. Okay, so whatever is the result of all of this is the answer. Enter this in your calculator and get an answer. All right, if you have any questions related to this uh, example, please ask. Okay, then we move on. You're given the letters of the word history. Okay, part A is arrange all letters in a row. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven spots available. We have seven contenders for the first spot, six, then five, then four, then three, then two, then one. It's better to write 7 factorial instead of this or 7 p 7 in place of this. So the answer for the first one is either 7 factorial or 7 p 7. 7 spots and 7 alphabets, so 7 p 7. Or six, 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 all the way till times 1. Okay, that was part A. Part B says, 
that the first letter has to be H, so fixed. And the last letter has to be Y, that's also fixed. So there's only one contender here, one contender here. There were total seven contenders, take away two, that's five contenders available for the five spots available. So that's going to be times 5P5 or times 5 factorial. So whatever is 5 factorial or 5P5 is the answer for part B. Remember, you have to find the actual value in the test and the exam. I don't have a very nice calculator right now. So I have to do 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 120. So this the answer for this one is 120. So your final working must have 5 factorial equals 120. If you leave it at 5 factorial or 5p5, you won't get the mark. Okay, part C. Uh, the letters T, O, and Y are together. Now, they can be in, in any order. It doesn't say in the same order. In any order. So, this is a question on grouping. If you remember that you group these together, T, O, Y, and all together they have three factorial arrangements or 3P3 arrangements. Now let's consider it as a single alphabet. The arrangements are three factorial. All right, so how many alphabets are left when we take away three, four? So one, two, three, four. So that's a total of five spots. So the answer is going to be three factorial times five factorial. So whatever is the answer for this is the is what you write down. Three times two times five times four times three times two times one is seven twenty. So I'm getting seven twenty. Okay, moving on. R and Y are together. Okay, so group together R and Y. That's 2 factorial or 2P2, calling it a single group, considering it as a single alphabet. So 2 factorial would are the arrangements and then take away 2 alphabets from the 7 given alphabets. That leaves us with 5 alphabets. So 5 more spots here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Collectively, these make six spots times two factorial. So six factorial times two factorial are the number of arrangements. If the word history is to be arranged such that R and Y need to be together. Okay. Notice that in the word history, no letter was repeating. When letters repeat, like in the case of Pakistan, so we just have repeating A's, nothing else repeats. Okay. Now, what we do? Whatever working we do, 
the working stays the same, but in the end, you divide it with two factorial because there are two A's. So you divide your answer with two factorial. Agar three A's hote, so you would divide your answer with three factorial. Agar let's say two A's hote, or saath three N's hote, so you would divide your answer with two factorial times three factorial. So the number of repetitions go in the denominator with the factorial sum. Okay. So the question is, arrange the letters of the word Pakistan in a row. Arrange all letters or all alphabets in a row. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight factorial upon repetition, two factorial. So whatever is the answer for this, you write it down. Then it's, it says first two letters are P and A in any order and last two alphabets. I keep saying letters, it should be alphabets. And last two alphabets are a and N in any order. So the first one is P and A or A and P. So that's two arrangements. P, A or A, P. And the last two are A, N or N, A. So that's again two arrangements. And then in the middle, how many alphabets do we have? Take away four. So that's going to be four. So that's four alphabets and four spots. So that's four factorial or four P4. So the answer would be two times. 4 factorial times 2 upon we have 2 repeating A's so divided by 2 factorial. So whatever is the answer for this, you write it down. Now we're changing the alphabet. The alphabet is now statistics. Let's look at the repeating numbers first. S, S, S. So 3S. And then we have T, T, and T. So 3Ts. And 2Is. So that means the working would be the usual working, but in the denominator, you're going to write three factorial times three factorial times two factorial because there's a lot of repetition going on. Okay, and how many letters are these in total? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten letters in total. I mean ten alphabets. Part A is arrange the letters of the word statistics in a row. 
So that's going to be 10 factorial or 10 P10 upon the repetitions. So whatever is the answer for this, write it down. Okay. Part B. The first three are T. The last two are I. Okay. So T, T, and T. That's three factorial if we're not accounting for the repetitions, then three contenders, three spots, and then the last two are I, again, ignoring the repetitions. This is, these are two contenders for two spots, so two factorial, and in between, take away five from 10, so that's five more spots for five contenders, so that's going to be five factorial, or five P5. So we have in the numerator 3 factorial times 5 factorials times 2 factorial. And in the denominator, you have to account for all the repetitions. 3 factorial times 3 factorials times 2 factorial. Okay, next part is the three T's are together. Okay, so Three T's are together, that means they can be anywhere in those 10 spots, but they have to be together. So this is a question on grouping. So we group them together, T, 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 not considering that they are repeating, we're going to treat them as three different numbers. So that's going to be three factorial. So the first group has three factorial arrangements and then take away three, from 10 alphabets, that's seven alphabets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So a total of eight alphabets. So eight factorial times three factorial should be the numerator. And then in the denominator, we're going to account for all the repetitions, three factorial times 3 factorial times 2 factorial. Enter this in your calculator and write down the value that you get. Okay. I think we should call it a day here. We will talk about combinations tomorrow in the last, first 10 minutes or so. And then we'll start the worksheet from permutation and combination. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow. Love is.